Once in a while, I discover a video game that is unknown to most people in the world, but is absolutely incredible at teaching you something really, really awesome. And this is the game you've seen in front of you. It's a game called A Slower Speed of Light, and it's a game made by the MIT University, specifically um, part of a university called The Game Lab. I believe it's actually several people that you can kind of check out in the credits here. And they, uh, what they did is uh, they actually used... Um, the Unity engine and they used a mod called Open Relativity to basically create this absolutely incredible simulation of what happens when you move closer to the speed of light. This is a continuation of the previous video I made about black holes and approaching the event horizon. Today I'm going to demonstrate to you what happens to the world as you move closer to the speed of light and how the world changes in front of you and also behind you. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So we're going to actually start the new game right here and it's going to load really fast. So basically all this game does is demonstrate to you how the speed of light or um, velocity closer to the speed of light changes the world um, around you. Once upon a time in a quiet village there was a little child. Sadly the little child fell into the death's icy grip far too soon. The little child's spirit began the journey to become one with light. But the speed of light was too fast for the small and clumsy little spirit. Luckily, the spirit world is full of magical orbs that slow down light. Collect orbs to slow down light to walking speed so you can finally move on. This is how many orbs you collect and this actually represents the percentage of the speed of light and this shows you a comparison between your speed and the speed of light. Although this is actually kind of tricky to figure out, this is more easy, basically it gives you percentage. And uh, this will, uh, here will show you the light that you're observing, so at some point you'll be able to see ultraviolets and also infrareds. And the controls are here. So let's start the game and look at this brilliant little game as it loads. So essentially, you're moving regularly, uh, and here what you're doing is collecting orbs. Now, unfortunately, the controls are relatively challenging because you're kind of moving like a tank, but that's because the, the idea here is that you represent a kind of a spaceship. So if I wanted to move sideways and look uh, into my side window, I could do that this way. I can just move using uh, D and S, and I'll be able to see what a spaceship would see from a side window. And that's, of course, to make this a little bit easier to visualize. Now, every orb represents 1% of the speed of light. I'm going to get to about 25%, and as I'm getting these orbs, you'll see that the color in front of me changes. And the reason why this is happening is because as you move closer to the speed of light, the light in front of you, the light that's coming toward you, is being blue shifted. It's being moved and stretched towards the higher energy spectrum of light. And you get to observe um, light um, that's a little bit more highly energetic. So here, let me just stop for a second. This is what the normal world looks like. Now, I'm going to move at 25% speed of light, and this is what you see. It gets a little bit more bluish, a little bit more greenish, whereas behind me, the opposite happens. I get to see the light a little bit redder. It's more red, it's more sort of dark, because it gets red shifted. So I'm going to get to about 50% of speed of light and demonstrate to you what happens then. But even at this slow velocity, the world looks quite different. It's a lot more saturated, it's a lot more um, visually, I guess, scary. At least to me, it looks a little bit scarier. And um, the other effect that you'll start noticing is the so-called stretching effect of the world that you'll see um, more pronounced when we get to higher speeds, higher velocities here. So let me get to 50 and I'll show you what, what happens then. Actually, not even 50. Look at what, look at what happens at, when I'm at 43 uh, speed of, uh, percent of speed of light. The world is completely different. It's a lot more ultraviolet. It's a lot more saturated with um, higher free, um, higher energy um, sort of colors, I guess. And uh, here we get, we get to see a lot of ultraviolet. We get to see a lot of colors that we don't really see otherwise. So our eyes would not be able to see any of these colors. It would be, this would be very, very sort of high energy particles. And uh, the world would actually look very dark to us. And behind us, the world is very sort of dark and red and kind of gloomy. Um, so I'm going to get, to, so right now we're at 50, we're, getting, we're going to get to 75 because that's when we we'll get to observe the effects of um, stretching as well. It's not as pronounced yet, 
but it will become more pronounced as we get closer and closer to the speed of light. And look at that. Did you did you see this for a second? So there's nothing here, right? And if I start moving toward it, you'll see that there's actually something on the bottom. And that's because we, we actually see ultraviolet radiation now. So whatever this is, it emits ultraviolet radiation that was invisible to us before. And so as you're basically moving towards something at a velocity of 60% of speed of light, even though previous colors are invisible to you now, what was invisible before has now become visible. So a lot of the light that used to be um, infrared, sorry, did I just call this uh, ultraviolet? It's not actually ultraviolet. Originally, what this is, is infrared. So whatever this is, is just infrared to us and would not be visible because we don't see infrared. But as you're moving toward it, it changes into a color. So the infrareds, original infrareds, would become um, normal colors now. And whatever was normal color will become ultraviolet. And um, vice versa. So if whatever's behind us and is ultraviolet will become regular color. Oh my god, this is so scary. This is scary in red. Look at that. Uh, and whatever is... Um, yeah, so whatever is behind us and is high energy will actually become regular color. And if I move inside, or basically if I look into my side window, this is what I would see. In front of me, it's sort of slightly more blue. Behind me, it's slightly more, more red. But right in the middle, it's actually normal colors. So the side windows of my spaceships, uh, or my, I guess my vessel, my spaceship, would actually see regular, uh, regular colors as they're moving against us or moving next to us. Uh, we're going to get to 75 and uh, see what happens then. So let me collect these orbs. It's a little bit more trickier than you think because I'm, I am moving like a tank here. And at 73, this is what you get to see. It's, it's a lot more saturated. It's a lot more unappealing. But this is essentially what the reality would look like. You would have these really, really highly saturated objects. And the side view would be this and behind us would be complete darkness now because a lot of the colors even the colors that were ultraviolet has now or have now actually been stretched into the invisible light spectrum we cannot see those lights anymore we cannot see those colors anymore they're now sort of invisible to us and one more thing you may notice is this as soon as i start moving look at how the, the mushroom in front of me actually will look more far away that's because we well, now also are experiencing the stretching effect and this is, of course, because as you move closer to the speed of light, everything in front of you gets kind of stretched. Everything behind you looks a lot closer than before. And this will become more uh, more visible as I get closer and closer to the number 90, 90% of the speed of light. Um, now, what I really like about this game is that it's so simple, but it's so effective at delivering this idea of moving at the velocity closer to the speed of light, which usually is so difficult to imagine. It's actually almost impossible to imagine unless you're Einstein. I think he was pretty good at imagining things. But um, for a normal human being that is not Einstein, it's kind of challenging. But this allows you to visualize both the change in color and the change in stretching. So at 80%, this is what happens. We're going to get closer to 90 by collecting these orbs. Come on, don't get stuck. Here we go. And 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, and let's stop at 90. So, okay, at 90%, if I'm standing still, the world is normal. If I'm moving um, away from something at 90% of speed of light, this is what I would see. It would come close to me, become really dark, and I would see almost nothing. If I'm moving towards something, this is what I would see. It would get really highly saturated, it would be really, really bright, and I'm really sorry for making... The URIs will probably hurt just as much as mine do right now. I'm sorry for making this uh, sort of, um, I guess, hazardous to people with epilepsy, because I think this is how epilepsy gets triggered as well. Uh, so you shouldn't be watching this if you're epileptic. But anyway, so this is what you would see. Uh, this is how the world will look like to you if you're moving at 90% of the speed of light. And this is what your side window would show. Darkness, blueness or purpleness and uh normal world right in the middle so it's kind of like a rainbow of visibility it's pretty awesome all right so let's get to 99 percent we're gonna get collect um nine more orbs and we're gonna stop at 99 percent one two three and here's the ninth orb and let's collect it and boom 99 percent of speed of light now this is theoretically possible Theoretically, it's possible to move at this velocity, but it's just very difficult to achieve. So this is what you would see. The wor normal world that you see in front of you would look like this. It would stretch into the distance. It would be very highly saturated. It would be a lot of different, very strange colors. 
and you would very likely have a headache. Behind you, it would be this. Almost complete darkness. You would only see colors on certain objects that emit high, high, high frequency radiation. Everything else would be completely dark. And your side window would show you this. So this is what the side window would show in your spaceship. And notice how things do get stretched or zoomed in. If you're, uh, if you're looking in the back window, things would look closer to you. If you're looking in the front window, things would look farther away. Let's collect the last orb and you'll see what happens. So at 100% velocity of speed of light, um, what you would uh, no longer see is colors. So everything behind you would be completely stretched into infinity, into complete and total um, nine minutes and six seconds. It took me quite a while. Uh, so the reason why you don't see colors anymore here is because, or I guess you see regular colors, is because if you were to move away from something at the speed of light, uh, you would essentially see nothing. Everything would be red shifted into infinity. And if you were to move towards something, it would be blue shifted into a very, very, very highly energized um, radiation that would most likely just burn and fry you. So the reason why you don't see colors anymore is because of that. It's just impossible to imagine, but you do see a crazy stretching effect. So uh, if you were to move at the speed of light or if you were light and you were to look behind you, you would see this. Things would just kind of um, come closer and closer to you until they would be right in front of your face. And we're talking about the entire universe. However, in front of you, things would look farther and farther away and you would never really be able to reach them. They would look like this. Oh, I did it again. No. Oh, no, that bug again. I accidentally... If you, Okay, if you're doing this, if you're playing this game, be careful with the with the fences. It happened to me before when I accidentally moved too fast through the fence and now there's no way out. So, okay, I'm, I'm gonna just start this over so you get to see how this game ends. But essentially, this is what happens to you at the speed of light. Things break, game breaks, the world doesn't work anymore. All right, I beat my old time, 3.46. I had to start this game over. But anyway, so this is what happens when you finish the game. Let's actually move at the speed of light inside this wide gate. We're gonna come from a distance hopefully without smacking into anything. And this is a lot harder than you think. Here we go, and score. And the game ends. And you actually get to read a bit of an explanation of what you've just experienced. So it tells you, you know, the end, but what really happened? And what happened is that you've experienced uh, the relativistic Doppler effect. And this is essentially what this game simulates and so well. Uh, you can read more about this as you basically play this game yourself. And I totally recommend play playing this yourself, trying it um, by yourself. And if you do beat my score that you just saw on the screen, post it in the comments below so we actually get to see who gets to do this faster. Uh, and this is actually where it explains to you the so-called searchlight effect. Moving the left, the objects on the left are brighter than the objects on the right. Uh, so this is actually the effect of moving sideways and looking into the side window of the spaceship. And the better term for this is relativistic aberration. So now you've learned a new term. And the so-called stretching effect is also known as Lorentz transformation. And this is what you experience when you move towards something and it gets stretched into almost infinity. The closer you are to speed of light, the more likely it's going to be infinity. And behind you, you'll experience the opposite. And as you finish this game, I really recommend that you read through these explanations because they basically simplify everything. And so these are the people responsible for making this game, and I totally thank them for making this amazing simulation that is absolutely free and is definitely free for you to check out as well in the link in the description below. Anywho, thank you so much for watching, guys. And of course, thank you, Albert Einstein, for coming up with this amazing uh, thought experiment that is now actually a video game that is absolutely free to download something like 107 years after he actually came up with his theory. And once again, this is a game called A Slower Speed of Light, made by the people from MIT University. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, share with your friends who might want to learn more about relativity as well. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed watching it. Don't forget to try this game if you actually want to tr give this a try yourself. And don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye bye. And special thanks goes to the entire team that made this game possible and to those of you that actually supported this channel on Patreon. Thank you guys, game you later.